Hey guys, and welcome to my wrap up for all of the books that I got to for the month of May. I'm, as of recording this, it's a few days before May is over, so there's maybe a chance that I can finish a book before the month is over, but with how busy I'm planning on being over the next few days, I highly doubt that. But I have plenty of books to talk to you guys about, so don't even worry. You see this big, gigantic stack of books behind me are all the books that I got to for this past month, and oh my goodness. I read 25 books, which is crazy because I wasn't even trying to read that many, but um, some of them were really short in my, in my defense. <laughs> um, so you guys don't think I'm like super crazy with how much that I read. But um, I listened to a lot of audiobooks last month. So yeah, my reading has been really good. I'm trying to really, really focus on the books that I physically own and just getting that TBR down because I believe before the month I was at... Ugh, I don't know, definitely a good amount over 300 books that I own that I don't even read, which is terrible. So I need to start working on that. Okay, so this month was a very good step in that direction. Let's get into the books. Like I said, there's 25 books to talk about. I don't want this video to take forever. I did not do any Friday reads, I don't think, over the past month. So I have not really told you guys my thoughts about these books. Um, so this might is my, um, not is my, is for sure this book, this video is going to be very long so I'm gonna try and keep it as brief as I can but I do want to let you guys know how I felt about all these books that I got to. Um, each book, I figure I can talk about each book for a minute hopefully and the video still won't be like ridiculously long. I don't need to break this up into multiple different parts. Um, so without any further ado let's just get right into them. So the last book that I finished was yesterday. The one at the top, we'll just start at the top and work our way back chronologically. I think that makes the most sense and the easiest so. Um, I'm excited to tell you guys about this book. It's City of Thieves by David Benioff. He is also the writer on, or uh, one of the creators, I believe, of Game of Thrones. I've owned this book for a minute and it's not very long. It's only about 200, it's a little over 200 pages. And I really enjoyed this book. Like, it was so, so close to being a five star book for me. Um, I would say this is probably like four and a half, four point seven five. 4.75. We're following two young men. One is... 20, the other one is, I don't remember now, 15, 16, 17. And it takes place in Leningrad and they are, um, it's during the war and the Nazis are laying like a siege on Leningrad and these two boys, um, one's a desert, a deserter, one's a deserter and one of them um, was caught for looting um, stuff off of a dead German. So they're both in jail and they're given this task that if they can find two dozen eggs for the colonel's, um, the colonel's daughter's wedding that's coming up, then they can have their lives back because both of the crimes they've committed are something that would receive the death sentence, which at first you wouldn't think that would be that hard, but finding two dozen eggs is very, very extremely hard to do. It's in the middle of war. Um, everybody's on rations. There's no chickens. There's nothing. They have a very, very small chance of even being able to do this. But So it's kind of like an adventure story, and I just really enjoyed this book. I love the characters, the setting. Um, I feel like David Benioff just is a really great writer, and I definitely would like to read other stuff by him. So and next we have Girl by Edna O'Brien. I love this book cover. <laughs> like, this is so pretty. I would frame this and put this on my wall. Um, this book I gave, I, I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but in my opinion it's maybe um, a little bit closer to a three star. Um, it's something I feel like I would read again. I did listen to this on audiobook and I feel like if I had, um, I just had a lot of stuff going on in my mind at the time, so I wasn't paying as much attention to it as I should have been. But, so I would like to read this again and then see what my final uh, reading would be at because this book is super short. Um, the audiobook itself I think only took me a few hours to listen to but in this book we're following um, these young women who have been abducted by Boko Haram and um, just the terrors of having to deal and be in that kind of situation is definitely very traumatizing and even um, well, I see I have to be careful because I don't want to give away too much of what happens in this book, but there's she's trying to escape and stuff. And, and one of the things I noticed looking at the reviews of this book that some people had commented on was that Edna O'Brien, she is a white, older white woman, and she is writing from the perspective of a younger um, African girl. So some people are not comfortable with reading this story written by that author. Um, for me, I don't really know exactly for sure how I feel about it. I mean, I definitely, it doesn't 
completely prevent me from reading a book because the author is a different race than the main character but I do believe that it's important that we're reading these stories from people who um, that's their culture and their background. Either way I could see how people could maybe be um, bothered by that but for me it's not something that will completely turn me away from reading a book. Next we have a play I got to. Um, it's called For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough and this is by Tozaki Shang. I am probably saying that wrong. Um, this is the second play I have ever read. Um, there was one other one I attempted that I didn't even finish because it did not hold my interest but I really enjoyed this. I would definitely reread it again. I can see why this is such a widely put on play and I watched the adaptation. Um, I think it came out in like 2010. It's currently on Netflix right now if you guys want to check it out. By, um, I believe Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry is the one who produced that. Um, but anyway, back to the book. I gave it five stars. Um, I really loved this and it's really hard to explain, especially like with the way this play is exactly what it's about. To sum it up, I would just say this play attempts to really look at a lot of different experiences from women of color and to um, be a voice for those who have gone had to go through um, all kinds of hardships and tragedies that are just kind of normal in our culture. And uh, I just really enjoyed this play. I am definitely going to be reading it again. Like I said, five stars. If you guys have any other plays that you can recommend to me, um, like this or like um, A Raisin in the Sun, which I really loved, um, let me know because I need some recommendations. Next, we have Human Acts by Han Kang. Now, this book I went into a very skeptical about because I read Han Kang's other book, The Vegetarian, and I did not really enjoy my experience reading that book, to be completely honest. But wow, this book completely changed my opinion. Like, I could respect The Vegetarian for what it was. Like, I feel like the writing itself was good. It was the story itself that I felt like was lacking. But this one definitely way made up more for it. Like this one I gave four stars, maybe even like four and a half, not quite five stars, but this book was really good, you guys. I would definitely recommend it to you. Um, it takes place in South Korea and we follow in the first like chapter a young boy whose name is Dong Ho and he is shockingly killed. So all of this is taking place um, during the student uprisings in South Korea, was it? Yeah, in South Korea, all the like student uprisings that were going on. So each chapter, um, there's six altogether, follows the perspective of someone who knew him or interacted with him at that time and their experience of going through those uprisings. And I just have to say, this is a very powerful book. I would highly recommend. And if you read The Vegetarian and you didn't like it, I would still say give this one a try because I'm really glad that I did. Next we have Baby Teeth by Zohi Stage. Uh, this one I gave two stars. So I listened to it completely pretty much on audiobook. Um, I considered DNFing it, but I don't know. Some part of me was just like, it's not that long, the audiobook. And I'm curious to see where it goes. So we're basically following um, two perspectives of a mother and her child. The child is about seven years old and has, the child refuses to speak, but we're seeing inside of the child's um, mind who I just, I think the reason why I didn't enjoy it that much because I just didn't find it very realistic or believable. Um, but if you're someone who doesn't need that in their mystery thriller books, then this is probably something you would enjoy. Like, I've seen people who love this book, people who hate this book, um, and not a lot of people are really falling in the middle. <laughs> but, um, I myself couldn't really recommend this book, but, I mean, don't let me turn you off from reading it if it's something you wanted to. The daughter, she's just very, very manipulative and evil little child that you want to die basically because she is trying to manipulate her parents and she's trying to kill her mother and she's like so but the, the thing i just don't understand is like she's seven years old and i don't understand how she could basically be born evil from when she was like before she could even learn how to speak she was evil and hated her mother so that part to me just didn't seem realistic but i don't know everything about mental health and stuff so maybe something like that has happened before just for me this just kind of missed the mark. I mean, it was interesting enough, which is why I gave it two stars, not one, but I just can't recommend this book if um, you're into mystery thrillers. There's just like so many other books that I have enjoyed more than this. Then I read Vinegar Girl uh, by Ann Tyler, who I mostly listened to this one on audiobook. I listened to a ton of audiobooks, just whatever I could find that was 
readily readily available to check out um from my Libby app I was checking out from my library and listening to you so this one is by Ann Tyler. Um, it's supposed to be a, a retelling of The Taming of the Shoe by William Shakespeare, which I'm not familiar with The Taming of the Shoe, so I can't really comment on that. Um, all around, I gave this one three stars. I thought it was okay. It was interesting enough. So we're following um, a woman. She's, I want to say, in her like late 20s to early 30s, and she's single. Uh, she lives with her dad and her sister. Her dad is a research scientist, and he has an intern that... His visa is basically running out it's been three years so the dad is asking her to marry his assist research assistant so that he could stay in america and uh, for, i just was like wow this is not something at all that i would do but it's interesting to just follow how the story and everything unfolds um i thought it was interesting i mean her younger sister is a character it was kind of annoying but i believe she was written that way on purpose um Oh yeah, altogether I think it was an interesting enough story, it just didn't really like, nothing super stood out to me, um, but it was still a good story for while I was listening to it, so three stars for this one. Then I listened to the audiobook of Not That Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham, uh, another one I was able to check out from the library right away. I don't even know initially why I bought this book, because it's not even a non-fiction book that I, celebrity, like memoirs and stuff, do not interest me at all. But um. One thing I want to comment before I go into my thoughts on this book is I just looked at it without the dust jacket on and it's beautiful underneath. Like if you can see this baby blue color with the gold foiling and then this is the end papers. Like whoever designed the inside of the book <laughs> is really awesome. Whoever designed the outside, if it's the same person, this does not look the same. To be honest, I do not like this book cover. It looks very dated. I don't know if it's something that they chose to do on purpose but um I just think it's so like basic and plain and something that anybody would could do on their word computer but uh, besides the point the book itself I gave this one I ended up giving this one two stars um maybe like 2.75 uh, I don't know I mean uh it's so hard to rate books about when people are writing about their lives and stuff I feel bad to give a reading on that but I just felt like I couldn't relate to her as a person just in I mean I've read before books people who come from completely different backgrounds as me and stuff and still been able to relate to the story and um, feel like some type of emotionally tied to it but I just felt like it was a basic memoir of a privileged white woman and it's just not something that I'm wanting to read at all right now and um, I should have known I was the, literally the day I was um, reading this I think was when Lena Dunham was trending on Twitter and I was learning I don't really, I don't know anything about Lena Dunham like I've never watched anything that she's been in I've never read any articles about her so I didn't know anything about her I just knew this was a semi-popular at for its time um, celebrity memoir and after reading a lot of the posts on Twitter I mean obviously I take everything I see on Twitter with a grain of salt but some of the stuff that people do have concerns with her specifically about were a little bit concerning some stuff I felt like was blown out of proportion or um, phrased wrongly but then some stuff is like okay that does make me a little bit uncomfortable so altogether um, this isn't a memoir that I would recommend it was a very short audiobook um, I feel like also I probably a third of this is about her love life and um, not even her love life but like her sexual life and I did not want to know all of those details and stuff like that's not what I expected to go into when I read picked up this book so yeah for that I'm just unfortunately this book is going to be unhauled very soon next we have the nocturnal brain nightmares neuroscience and the secret world of sleep this is by Guy Leshinger this one was a nonfiction book and I gave this one four stars um, I could definitely with nonfiction, I feel like I need to read it at least twice to fully get everything out of the book itself. Um, I just find it very interesting, all of the, like it says, the secret world of sleep, like I just find it also very interesting. Um, the stuff that goes on in our brains while we're sleeping and the different, um, where he has like a sampling of different disorders and conditions that can be affecting people's lives from sleep. Some of them I was aware of before, but I'd never really had looked too much into them because fortunately for me, I don't have any serious sleeping conditions myself, but I still find it very a very interesting topic to read about. So if you like this um, nonfiction science-y books, I would recommend this one. And we have another mystery thriller. This one is The Hand That Feeds You by A.J. Rich. Um, 
this one I picked up has been sitting on my shelves forever. So with this one, uh, let me see, for this rating I ended up giving it three stars. It was just okay. So I remember being very confused at the beginning of the book. So we walk this, at the, it starts off with this woman walks into her apartment and um, her dogs are there. I think they're like pit bulls or something. And she finds this dead body and the dead body is of her fiance. And apparently, I was so confused at first, so if the dogs, they were saying like the dogs killed him, and I don't know, I was honestly just so confused. But then once I, then I, stuff like made sense, but I just remember like thinking it was just an okay mystery thriller. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on at the end, the ending I didn't like. Um, I mean, it was interesting enough for the, I listened to an audiobook, I don't remember if I said or not, but um, yeah, like for me, this was just an all right mystery. The um, I forgot to mention so the her fiance kind of the mystery goes into the fiance. It's like um, he actually isn't like the person that he is claiming to be the the dead fiance, and um, she's trying to investigate onto who she was really married to or about to be married to, and looking into how or why would her dog savagely kill her fiance. I don't know, that part just kind of made me uncomfortable, the whole like dogs killing the fiance part thing. Um, I forget what happened in the end now, but I think it all, it all like comes together and makes sense at the end, but uh, all together, I, this isn't a mystery thriller that I would highly recommend. Same goes for this next one, <laughs> Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McCrite. This one I didn't even finish, so I got about an hour into the audiobook for this and I knew I just did not care and it was like, this was a pretty long audiobook and I was like, I'm not going to listen to the rest of this. So we're following a mom, her daughter has just killed herself or maybe she was, she, people are thinking she just jumped off the roof at her school. Um, I can't even honestly tell you that much about it because I only got about an hour into the book but I was just like pretty bored and I felt like um, reading from the perspective of, or listening to this perspective of the daughter she was kind of annoying and sad enough to say and um, I didn't find the mom's character that compelling either so I decided to cut my losses and wasn't gonna make myself listen to this whole book if I wasn't interested in it and so what I did was I googled the spoilers for it to find out what happened in the ending and I'm glad I did because I was like yeah this this wasn't anything anything fantastic to read so um, I just decided I was going to DNF this one and it was a good choice. I do not do that very often but I just didn't want to force myself to read something I wasn't interested in. Next we have War Girls by Tochi Onyibuchi. I finally got to this one. So this is a young adult um, YA, I believe it's going to be fantasy series. And this is the first one. It's very science fiction-y. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. We're following the perspective of two sisters during this um, war that's going on. Um, it's based in Nigeria and it's kind of based off of a true events and stuff that actually happened in Nigeria's history. It's very um, technology heavy like um, as far as science fiction goes like in that type of genre where there's a lot of just, just really cool technology things. I will say the book um, I had such high expectations for this book that um, I really thought it was going to be five stars, but it was barely a four star in my opinion. Uh, something about the uh, I don't know if it was the writing, it just felt very long. Some of it was hard to get through and whenever I put the book down, I never felt like a strong, strong urge to pick it back up again. Like I had to force myself to keep going through it, even though I enjoyed the story and everything. I just, I don't know, something didn't connect with the book, if me didn't connect with the book enough as much as I would have liked to, but I still, and don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed this book. I think I just went in with too high of expectations. I'm definitely going to be reading the sequel to this. I believe it comes out later this year, so I read this one just in time, unless the date gets pushed back, which is a strong possibility with kind of everything that's going on in publishing right now. Then I read another science fiction book. I'm going to take the bookmark out of this one. And that is Stronger, Faster, and More Beautiful by Arwen Ellis Dayton. That was like a huge um, tear in the thing because I b bought this um, super cheap on Book Outlet. This one I enjoyed as well. Um, this one was kind of similar where I gave it, I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but I kind of would, um, looking back, maybe give it more like three and a half, just because I'm having um, a little bit harder time remembering what happened in this story. I think this one also kind of was my fault in that I was listening to the audiobook for it and not paying enough attention to because each um, section follows a different 
character but what I like about this book so we're following um it's kind of described as for people who are fans of Black Mirror and Westworld which I can definitely get those vibes from this book each chapter kind of jumps forward in time and we're following like a completely different character uh, there was one character that kind of made a background appearance a little bit through some of the narratives but for the most part like every time we skipped forward it was um some time had passed so I liked that. I thought that was cool and not as cool. Like sometimes it would take a minute to get into the next story, like just right when you were kind of getting comfortable with the storyline that you're following, then you would be dro dropped into another storyline and having to figure things out all over again. So um, I think that's kind of one thing that kind of made it a little bit interesting for me. Basically like society is kind of just starting to, at the beginning of the book, people are starting to use technology that's available to make modifications to their own selves and there's people who believe that that's something we shouldn't do and there's some people that are really into it and they're kind of like both sides um, are kind of conflicting with each other. Um, so at the beginning of the novel it's like one, this technology is new and like kind of each generation is becoming more advanced and more um, seen in society and more accepted to where it gets to the point where there's more people who have modifications and the modifications by the end just get like completely out of hand and not out of hand but they just like get way more advanced than at the beginning of the book so I thought it was interesting um, it kind of gave me if you guys read um, Uglies in the Pretty series by Scott Westerfield it's kind of similar to that next we have The Binding by Bridget Collins I gave this one three stars this one was um a uh, adult um, like a fantasy I guess is what I would put this uh, genre into I really love this edition I picked it up from Waterstones this is the Waterstones edition and uh, let me before I even get into this book show you guys what this looks like because it's very beautiful so this is the book itself honestly this is probably the most beautiful naked hardback that I have ever seen underneath a dust jacket it's books like these that make it <laughs> where you want to store them without their dust jacket on because they're just that beautiful but uh anyway with this book here i gave it three stars i thought it was just all right i kind of wanted it to like it a bit more than i did but um one thing i did like i liked the author's writing but the story itself i just found lacking for me in certain places i think it was definitely like interesting enough to keep my attention and in, in everything but it's I gave it three stars because I feel like it's not one of those ones that's really memorable and going to stick around for a while. Like I'm already forgetting some of the more um, details of this book and I didn't read it that long ago. We follow Emmett and he's becoming an apprentice for a bookbinder. So um, bookbinders will take someone's memories, what they want to get rid of, um, and basically put it into a book for them and that once that person's memories are in the book then they won't remember it themselves. So. Um, that's their whole business. Some people don't um, believe that that's right to do and some people will pay to have this done. Um, there's a lot of other nuances and other things that are going on in this story as well but um, that's kind of like just the main gist of it. Oh yeah so something I forgot about was so he ends up finding his name written on one of these books um, that have because once you once the book is made like your name is put on it and so he ends up finding a book with his name on it and that means he has had his memories bound before and he doesn't understand you know why he would do that or what happened in his previous life so yeah um I would say I wouldn't not recommend you to read this if you're if you were already interested in it before but for me this book was just okay next we have Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman uh, this book I really enjoyed you guys I gave it five stars um, this is a YA contemporary book. Oh, yeah, for a minute, I, <laughs> to be honest, like my memory is so terrible, I forgot about this book. As soon as I started looking at the synopsis, like everything came flooding back into my memory of what happened in this book. And I, this is the author's debut novel, and I have to say, wow, it's so well done. I would highly, highly recommend this book. Like I said, five stars. Um, we're following Kiko. She's half Japanese, half white, and she is living with her mother. Um, her mother is, oh my god, probably one of the most worst annoying uh characters I have ever read in a book before <laughs> like I just hated her so much and her mom also has a brother who has been abusive to Kiko before that's moving in the house so um Kiko does not get into this dream school that she has been um and I'm not giving away anything because it says it in the spoiler it does it says it in the um synopsis of the book so she doesn't get into the school and she's basically banking on her whole life is getting into that school she didn't apply anywhere else 
So she ends up coming back into contact with a friend from the past and the story co goes on from there and I just I just really love this book you guys. I would definitely recommend. I have heard good things about this book and it definitely lived up the hype for me. Next another science fiction book I got too was The Humans by Matt Haig. I listened to this one on audiobook. It's kind of um uh, kind of like an alien book but we're like kind of where like an alien comes to our world or we're following um this alien who's basically taken over the life of this man and his mission is to um there's a couple people that he has to kill in the meantime he doesn't even know how to be human so it's supposed to be kind of comedic because it's like if someone coming from another world like doesn't understand like why do we have to wear clothes and just so many different things that humans do and for me I think the reason I gave this three stars is because uh when books try to be funny or when it's supposed to be comedic I'm just not really into it um my humor just isn't like that and I thought it was interesting enough of a book to read three stars I thought it was so good but like I said it's before with three star books usually like I feel like they're books that aren't super memorable and that I feel like I'm probably gonna forget most of it by the <laughs> not too not too long after I read it but I did enjoy the audiobook for this. It was definitely interesting, but, um, yeah. It's, I don't know if it would be described as first contact with aliens. I don't think so, but definitely science fiction. Next, we have a short story collection, and that is 145th Street by Walter Dean Myers, and I gave this one four stars. So all these, um, each story in here are, I love when stories are interconnected or they all take place, like, in the same neighborhood. With the instance of this book, they all take place within the same block, and you really just get to see... Um, how this city street in Harlem, I believe it is, yes, um, was functioning. Some of the stories were a little bit on the funnier side or joyous side, some were on the more sad, pressing side. This is definitely something I would read again. And for a short story collection, I believe this is one of the more well better, <laughs> this is one of the well written more well I can't even speak what's the grammar for what I'm trying to say this is one of the more well written and produced ones I just love when there's like something that really ties all the stories together next we have Citizen by uh, Claudia Rankine an American lyric now I feel really dumb because when I um, ever I've only seen pictures of this book online and because I'm seeing a small picture on my phone I thought this was an ink um, and like an ink drop because if you look at it from far away it looks like it could be like a, a swap of like paint or something but no when I realized it was a black hoodie you guys I was blown away I was like wow this is great so, so I've heard this um it's kind of like a poetry essay collection and I gave this one four stars it was very good I could see why um I just been seeing this book everywhere and it's definitely got a lot of like critical notice as far as poetry goes. It's all about race and um, kind of just uh, racial aggressions that are like going on in the 21st century and for me I like I find I have a hard time trying to explain poetry books but um, this is something I feel like I would need to definitely read again but it was a really good book, you guys. I would definitely recommend, especially in the time we're living in now, we need to be reading authors like this, reading books like this, and I hope that at least one of you guys will <laughs> see this and decide to pick this up for yourself too, because I think this is a good book. Next, we have a classic, which I haven't been reading many classics lately. Um, I decided to pick this one up because it's pretty short, and it's Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I want to read Wives and Daughters, but that one is just so long that I decided to read this one instead. So this one I gave three stars. I thought it was okay. I love um, getting into a classic, just like the way they write, the way they speak is just so different from how it is today and that can be really refreshing but as far as the story itself I found that I mean there's not usually a lot going on in these kinds of stories usually to begin with anyway but I just felt like um I kind of wanted a little bit more from the story on this one I didn't like it definitely as much as I liked um North and South North and South I can't remember now if I just said Wives and Daughters Wives and Daughters I have not read but North and South I did read and I like that one there, okay, the one thing I did love about the setting of this book is we're following this small little town. People don't have a lot of money and stuff, but they do have some. And I love that it's like run by women, and especially in the time that this was written, which I forget the year now, but um, it's a community that's largely inhabited and run by women, and I just love that aspect of the story. 
I feel like this is a book, like this is a book that I would like uh, probably rate higher on a second reread of this one. I just have a feeling that that would happen. Next, we have another poetry book, and that is Dreams from Many Rivers: a Hispanic History of the United States, Told in Poems by Margarita Engel. So I'll give you guys a little bit of an idea of what it looks like. There's like little illustrations and stuff that go along with these poems, and like the title says, it's um, a Hispanic history of the United States. So. Um, because it's in poem form, it's not, um, this isn't like your definitive end-all be-all book on Hispanic history. This book skims it, the surface of it, but there's so much more. But it's a poetry book. Um, I gave this one four stars. I just thought it was really well done, really pretty, and it's definitely sparked an interest in me to read um, more nonfiction books about Hispanic history and, you know, just get to know more about my own history. Next we have The Factory, which was not a plan to read this month, but one of you guys was super, super nice enough to send me this off of my Amazon wishlist. Thank you again so much. And I read this book, um, I started it like immediately when I got it, I think because it's so um, short of a book that I just felt like, oh yeah, I can just finish this in one day. <laughs> and um, I think I did, or maybe I took two days, I don't remember. But um, I really liked the, um, what do you call it, the writing style of this book. So I think this is a book in translation. Yeah, this is the English language debut of Japan's, one of Japan's most exciting new writers. Um, it's translated by David Boyd. So I gave this one three stars. I thought it was good. Um, I, it's just like kind of, it's a good book for the length that it is. It's a very micro look into the lives of these few workers that are working in this industrial factory. And each worker is super just like focused on their task, almost to the point where they kind of everything else in their life, I don't know, it's almost like surreal. It's really hard to explain, but even the back of this says it's like surreal and it's a portrait of the absurdity and meaninglessness, meaninglessness of the modern workplace. And I thought this was an interesting enough read for what it was. And I would definitely, I just want to read more books that are in translation. So I'm glad that I got to one this month. Next, we have a book that was from another author or that I already mentioned earlier in just a few books ago and that's Harley in the Sky by Akemi Don Bowman so I read both her books now and this one was sent to me in a once upon a book club book box and I was able to open up gifts that came with this book at the same time that I read it I would definitely highly recommend you guys check out their service if that's something that interests you I just loved the experience itself of reading this book um, I gave it five stars on Goodreads. Uh, I think I'm maybe it was more like 4.75, but it was enough for me to round it up to five. So we're following um, a similar story-ish almost to her other book, Starfish, where we're following a um, we're following a young teenager and she's wanting to pursue her dreams, but being held back by familial ties. Um, this one specifically, she wants to be a trapeze artist and. Uh, she wants to join the family circus, and I just really enjoyed this book, you guys. Um, she has a huge fight with her uh, family, and so she decides to go and join a rivaling circus troupe. And it kind of, the story goes from there. I just, I really like it. I think something I also enjoyed about both of these books are, the, they're young adult, but the um, main character has just graduated from high school. So they're kind of at a different place of life than following the young adult books where, um, the main character is still in high school, it's just kind of a different perspective and I enjoy um, when they're not in high school more than when they are. Then I read Shout by Lori Hulse Anderson. This is the follow-up to her other really popular book, it's called um, Speak, and I gave this one four stars. Um, this one is a poetic memoir and she touches on things that happened for the author in her own past. Um, and it's kind of told in like free verse and it also touches on um, the book that she wrote that's like super well popular, um, um, Speak, and then kind of just like her life after you write a book like that that really just blows up and touches so many people and I feel like this was definitely a very good follow-up to uh, Shout and I would definitely recommend this one if you have read Shout I would definitely I mean I keep getting the two titles mixed up if you have read Speak I would recommend Shout to read that one after okay we're almost done we're almost done guys the last two well not the last two there's one more after this um are both from the same author and it's The Fox and Star and The Worm and the Bird from Corley, Corley Bickford Smith I love her illustration style. So if you guys have seen the book I just talked about, um, Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell, all these 
Penguin Cloth Bound books. Um, Coralie Bickford Smith is the one who ha is responsible for those illustrations. And she's now come out with books of her own. And these ones are kind of like, they look more like children's books, to be honest. They're very short. It only took about five minutes to read each one. But she does the illustration and the story for both of them. And I just really want to support her because I just love her as an author and as an illustrator. And I hope that she keeps coming out with lots of beautiful books. So I think I gave each of these um, four stars and I think they're just super beautiful. But I will love to see these on my shelf. Then lastly, but not least, we have Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. So this was a book I almost unhauled because just looking at it, this doesn't say, speak to me at all. <laughs> I am so glad. I am so, so glad that I did not. You guys, this, I listened to this on audiobook. It was so good. Like even as time passes, I feel like I'm in, I look back and I'm like, wow, I, I gave it four stars, but honestly, this is like the closest uh, mystery thriller book has come in a long time to getting a five stars nearly. And I just can't tell you guys anything about this book. Just read it. <laughs> I didn't, I went into it not knowing anything, to be honest myself. And maybe, you know, maybe this book isn't for everybody, but as far as mystery thriller goes, I kind of have been a little bit like, sad that I haven't read any that I was just super excited about while I was reading it in a long time. To give you like the bare bones about it, we're following this couple and they seem to have the perfect life. They have a lot of money and they seem like they have the perfect marriage and they just look so so perfect and of course when anything looks too perfect it's because it's a lie. <laughs> and so uh, I just can't, I'm not gonna give you guys any spoilers, don't worry, but if you're into mystery thrillers, <laughs> I would highly recommend this book. Also something I wanted to mention about that, I listened to an audiobook and I know a mystery thriller book is good when it's giving me like anxiety and I want to stop listening to the book because I'm getting too much anxiety and I'm scared to know what's gonna happen next. So that is a sign of a good mystery. So those are all the books that I read for the month. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive into my reading for this past month and let me know if you guys read anything that stood out to you for the month of May and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!